I want to apologize for our broken connection earlier. We did uh, drop out of Grandma's live birthday stream, uh, but now we're going to be pre-recording, so you guys can still join the celebration afterwards. Um, as you see, Grandma did eat through her entire cake already. Um, it was beautiful for those that didn't get to see it. Um, but that's one of her favorite things, so of course it's gone now and the girls all joined in. We got to have a nice little celebration together. Yeah. Um, Chris, can you tell us, for those that weren't able to watch, a little bit about Grandma and like how old she is? So Grandma here is the oldest animal we have at the San Diego Zoo. She is and the oldest animal in the whole Wildlife Alliance the, that, that I would know about. Um, she is estimated to be 138 years old. We recognize her hatch day, birthday, on November 15th. But thanks to the pandemic, we had to push back the celebration. And thanks to internet connections, here we are amongst the cake. So 138 <laughs> years old, um, which is not very old. You know, Galapagos tortoises, the record setter that, that we know of lived to be 175. Wow. But that may just be a normal kind of not that old of an old age for them. We really don't know. There hasn't been many that were that have ever lived to be that age where they knew when the animal hatched. So in another 150 years or so, now that we've got a lot uh, in the wild in Galapagos that are tagged and they know who's who, when they start to get really old, then we'll have some real data on like what's a really old age and what's just kind of an average old age. But currently the record setter is 175. So hopefully still a lot of, a lot of years for grandma here. Um, she is one of eight of our original uh, tortoises from the Galapagos that came here in 1928. Uh, the 138 and the, the other ages are all estimates based on the size that they were when they arrived in 1928, based on photographs that we've got. Oh, wow. Um, cool. And so it is it is an estimation, but that's our based on all the evidence we had, our best our best estimation of age. Our other tortoises range, our youngest one is 70 years old, one of our males, right around 70. Again, it's an estimation, but we've got actual better records on him, just not an exact year, but a, a time frame. And then uh, up into the one teens for the other ones. Oh, wow. What you'll see here in this habitat is all females. This is winter time, which is the time of year in the wild where the females would kind of go away and, and down the slopes of the islands. The Galapagos are volcanic islands. So they would go down to a lower altitude to lay eggs. And the boys would stay up at higher altitudes amongst the lusher vegetation to keep chowing down. Uh, and so right now in the winter, we've got them separated out, girls in this area and boys in a different habitat. So everybody you see cruising around, these are all the girls. We have five girls and six boys. Now, what um, did her birthday cake consist of? We see that there's a little bit still <laughs> yeah. on her face. So. so we've got, on her face, we've got a little bit of a hibiscus leaf, a hibiscus <laughs> flower. They love hibiscus. They love they love anything that they can get up to that's red or orange. That's the color of treats in the wild. So red hibiscus blooms, one of their favorite. Also have a sweet flavor to them. This big puddle here was a gorgeous cake made out of watermelon and honeydew melons. Uh, the letters, which are now smashed in uh, to the mud over there, those were green bell peppers. Also, <laughs> Obviously a little bit uh, easy for the arts and crafts side of me to carve into a one, three, eight, but also they do have a sweetness to them. These are animals that uh, normally their diet is mostly high fiber grasses. Uh, oh, see, I told you. <laughs> yep. We were talking earlier about sometimes they'll step on, their f on your feet. It's not aggression. It's just, it happens. Thankfully it's not too it's not heavy. Too bad, it's yeah. not too bad. Chips weighs right around 300 pounds. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's not the best part of the day. <laughs> but it's not too bad. They're pretty, like, they're, I know that they can be pretty slow, but they're pretty quick if you're not paying attention yeah. for, like, two seconds. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that's really funny. I'm sorry that happened. It's okay. Um, <laughs> Chips is sorry too, and she'll she'll realize it once she's done chowing down on that pepper. Hey, I'm glad she got her treats. That's yeah. all. That's all that matters. She got to join the birthday fun, which is perfectly fine with me. Yep. <laughs> pull pull your foot out now. There you get the go. Oh man, those are pretty and white too. That's okay. Um, what else did they eat? So that's oh, and a puntia or a prickly pear cactus. There was a nice wreath of that around here, and that is a big part of their diet in the Galapagos. Something that they get here as a treat is enrichment a lot. We grow it here they it 
it's something that they really enjoy. But the fruity stuff is a special treat. This is an animal that does not, um, in the wild, eat much sugar. And um, if you have a tortoise, if, if you guys at home have tortoise as pets, you need to really know the natural history of that species. Because if you're feeding sugary stuff to a species that does not normally get much in the way of fruit and sugars in the wild, it can really mess them up. They, they need to, uh, they need to follow the same kind of diet that they actually would get in the wild. Definitely, um, nutrition can, is so important. And it can for cause them a lot too. of it can cause a lot of metab metabolic problems if you don't. Now, is that um, their nutrition part of what keeps them like you know youthful in a way? I guess you could say like 138. They, like <laughs> their whole kind of you could say that metabolically they live slowly, right? They live their okay. whole lives slow. They move slow. The heart beats really slow, uh, just 15 times a minute for them. Wow. They breathe slowly. It's just everything they do is slow. They grow slow. Um, so in a way, I mean, their diet being, being a healthy diet for them, um, uh, just like us, it, you know, it powers their cells with, with the proper kind of fuel that they need. Um, at the cellular level, it also, they it a very high fiber diet, which obviously helps them uh, in the digestive side of things, you know, uh, avoid problems. So all around, just like with people, the, the right kind of balanced diet is very important. And if they don't get that diet, then they can, they can die at a very early age. You'll hear about tortoises that pass away way too young, like in their forties and fifties when oh. for a species that, you know, could normally live well into their mid hundreds or at least over a hundred years. So depending on the species. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's just a very important thing. And, and even though a tortoise like these guys would eat fruit all day, if we gave it to them, <laughs> it's uh it's not a good thing. I would eat chocolate all day if you gave it to me. Uh, hey, same. Sweets are good, and, but only in moderation. Yeah, but not, not at all what you actually would want to to have as your diet. Yeah. So exactly. Hi, chips. Can, can you tell us a little more about like grandma as far as like personality? I know you get to work with them every day, so yep. you kind of know like the differences between them all. And she is uh, a little bit slow to, <laughs> not just slow moving, but slow to. Um, to get up and go like this morning uh she was the last one to come out of their nice warm bedroom um some of them like chips here is always interested and curious on whatever's going on <laughs> and several of our tortoises both the girls and the guys we've got individuals who kind of have fomo you know it's like wait what's going on <laughs> i've got to be up in that business of whatever it is and grandma uh is one who is more like you know what you go and do whatever you're doing and i'll I'll go join you if I decide I want to. She's not one to be peer pressured into doing anything. She sounds very chill. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. Oh, she looks like she's on the move slightly. Yep. She sees the road Yeah, she's oh, like. Do you? She's like, there's some leftovers. Oh, you found a flower under you. There it is, yep. She's got <laughs> a hibiscus bloom saving for later. <laughs> <laughs> She's very shy. And then we got Chips over here trying to knock over our yeah. videographer's camera. Yeah. Who That's a good, a good point. Rick, uh, one of our volunteers here, just made a good point that she's a shy tortoise. Chips is not shy. The <laughs> one that just did the, the flyby there. She's very, very outgoing. <laughs> and she definitely loves sure. <laughs> she definitely <laughs> loves getting her neck scratched they all they all will will respond to that um i think earlier we you and i had talked about um their response to having their necks their their skin stimulated it to them um it, re it, re it reflects the same kind of stimulation they get in the wild from finches that come down and pick their skin. And they've got a symbiotic relationship with those birds. And in order to stimulate those, uh, or not to stimulate, to encourage those birds, I guess would be the better word, to stick around and keep picking at their skin and cleaning parasites and dead skin cells off, they hold stark still, kind of a, a tonic immobility. And that is a instinctive response. We've got, uh, we have some tortoises here that never lived in the Galapagos. We've got, we've got a couple that were hatched, you know, in human care yeah, right. and have never lived in the wild. And yet they still do the same thing. They will stand up straight, they will hold still. Uh, they won't move, they won't blink. 
uh, for several minutes just from having their neck scratched like that because they want to encourage those birds to keep cleaning me. So it's just like a sea turtle at a reef cleaning station. And so that's exactly what Madeline here is doing. Grandma was doing it a little bit earlier. Let's see if we can get her to do it again. She stands up and does it oh. fairly, oh. <laughs> fairly regularly, but she's a little bit more shy, a little bit, a little bit more nervous about things. Oh, she's doing it slightly. She's yeah. coming. She also is. Uh, she got. She has very short little legs. So when oh. she stands up tall, it's not very tall. Now, is their height difference different as well? Yeah, like, they get different. It's individual differences in the length of the legs. There she goes. The length of the legs, how much of their neck will stick out. Oh, wow. So you can see like <laughs> between Madeline and her. Now, these are two different species as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's just all these little differences that when you work with them, when you see them on the regular basis, a lot of our guests who come to the zoo on a regular basis can see them. They notice the differences. How oh, many? Who's that? Oh, that's. <gasps> oh. Rick just, we've got this cute thing. This is an actual life-size model of an egg with a hatchling <laughs> coming out. So you get an, an wow. idea of, of how big they can grow. They, yeah, they are huge and smaller compared to the males. Like we talked right. about earlier as well. Like the males are yeah. what, like twice their size? Two to four times the size wow. usually in the wild. So uh, our smallest girl here weighs just over 200 pounds. Hello. <laughs> our largest male weighs over 500. Wow. So, uh. Yeah, they, thanks, Rick. We don't want that stepping on my foot. They, yeah, they, <laughs> they definitely have that sexual dimorphism, both between the shell shape, the, the bottom of the shell, the plastron yeah. on males is concave. The females, it's more flat. The uh, tails are much, much more big, noticeable tail on the guys compared to the girls. Um, and just the general size, it's much different. I don't have anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, Isabel, super social, super curious. I can see that. Yeah. I think she thinks, oh, I guess my shirt is green. I didn't even realize. A little bit of green there. I think about yeah. that today. And now, they'll probably go in and probably, yeah, keep eating on the watermelon that's in yeah. there. They'll clean it up. Now you mentioned different um, species. So between these two, how many different females? We have, we have uh, four species of females. Oh, wow. Just, let me try to remember here. Yeah, we've got four and we've got four species of boys Wow! and three of those species we have boys and girls oh wow okay. so and then we've got one species where we just have one male yeah. and we've got another species where we just have two females so and i don't think people like realize that like when you yeah. look at them i mean yeah you just think oh we have all look like tortoises yeah <laughs> we have um more dome backs than we do saddle backs uh, you and i had mentioned earlier uh on round one when there was still a cake to look at that the big differences uh, between the species the biggest visual difference is that some have these domed shaped shells and they can't reach their heads up as high their, their necks don't get as high because where they come from there's a lot of grass to eat on the ground and so they're kind of out mowing the lawn they don't have to get their heads up high yeah and then some have much higher shells in the front to where the shell doesn't cut down, it comes straight out or even flares up. And that has a little bit of a resemblance to a riding saddle. And so those are called saddle bags. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I didn't realize that's where the name and, came from. And the name Galapagos <laughs> comes from an old Spanish word for saddle. Oh, wow, um, okay. So that's, uh, you know, it all kind of ties back to yeah, that shape. Now there are intermediate versions of those, of cool. those shapes. Um, you'll see some that are of the saddleback tortoises have these really big flared up uh, edges to the fronts of the shells. Some of them that aren't nearly as dramatic, but there's still that wow. height difference. And so, uh, yeah, th those are the big differences. We have two saddlebacks, one female, one male. They are the same species, so they're kind of a couple. Oh, wow. Everybody okay. else is a dome. Um, <laughs> but of the 12 species of Galapagos tortoises that still exist, and I say still, there were 15 historically, and you know, human um, exploitation of tortoises back in the, the sailing era, where, where sailors would take them and use them as sources of meat on ships, um, as they would sail out to go whaling uh, or privateering or, or whatever they were doing, naval vessels in the Pacific, they would stop, they would take tortoises off the islands. Well, that really decimated the populations in the wild. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are three species that are completely extinct. There's one species that still technically exists, but it's functionally extinct because there's only a single female that's known. 
And then some of the other species are critically endangered and some are doing fairly well. And it kind of goes back to how accessible those islands were to those sailors mm -hmm. and how many were taken off. One big problem was that when a sailors, a crew of sailors would go aboard to collect tortoises for a ship, the females were down closer to the beach often because they go down to lower altitudes to lay eggs and they're a lot lighter. So it's easier to pack up a bunch of girls and take them away than a bunch of big guys. And so you end up taking, you know, hundreds and thousands of tortoises off an island in one fell swoop. And also a lot of them were disproportionately female. You're really wrecking their chances for their populations to rebound. Anyway, long story short, there were 15 species. There are now 12, really basically only 11 because one has one individual and we're lucky enough to have five here of those oh, species wow. in one combination or the other. Super interesting. You still Chris. have some, <laughs> some watermelon. They've got great, <laughs> great table manners. Hey, better than me sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us today for this Absolutely. birthday celebration. Thank was, you all for coming. Yeah, and thank you all for being a part of it as well. Again, sorry about the technical difficulties, but we're glad that you could still join us um, for birthday, um, grandma's birthday today. Um, I really hope that I can look as great as she does in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> At 138, yeah. I will, if I make it half that long, looking half as good as she does, I'll be very proud of yes, myself. Yes, for sure. But thank you again, Chris. <laughs> Thanks thank for coming. Thank you guys.